Okay, so just a quick definition of out of range values are those values which are outside the expected scope of response. They can be numer numeric ver values which exceed the anticipated minimum or maximum. They can, be they can be response categories that were not previously identified, that you didn't anticipate. Um, you add a new test, you add a new type of test, uh, and so that, or a new drug comes on the market after the forms were designed, that would be a new um, category. Um, the reasons for, um, out of range values can be due to changes in the environment, such as the availability of new drugs, or it can be due to data entry errors. If your system um, is set up to allow some out of range values to get into the system, then some of it can have to do with, with the actual data entry errors, not so much the data recording errors. Um, so utilization of range restrictions on numeric fields to prevent entry of erroneous data can help uh, reduce the out-of-range values. Um, and all, in addition, logical checks can conditionally restrict entry of, of out-of-range values. Um, now there's a trade-off here. I mean, if you put a lot of time in, in your data entry system and having conditional logical checks based on other variables, other values that might be in this, somewhere else in the system, it can actually slow down data entry. So you need to make choices about how much, um, how much checking you want to do at the point of data entry and how much you want to do uh, post hoc. <coughs> So we want, we want to try and anticipate the fact that there's going to be out of range values, just like with missing data. So in the data collection, we want to include um, a response category of other um, with a place to specify what other is. So if you're not sure that, you're, that all of your um, categorical responses are capturing all possible answers, then you definitely want to include another and um, maybe a place to write in what, what that specifically is. It's very, very helpful to include version numbers on your data collection forms so that you can track when a response category was added to the actual form. So if, if you have a new medication come on the market and people and you haven't updated the forms yet, and people start checking other and writing in what that new medication is, then hopefully you can get the data entry system set up so that it'll actually create a new category for that system. But before that happens, that, those, that new drug may just go into your, um, a text field in the database, or it may not go in at all. So then once you see that this is happening and this new drug is out there and on the market, you can go and modify the data the data collection form, but you want to be sure to you know, to note when that modification took place, so that um, and that new medication got added to the form, so that you know when that was speci a specific response and when it stopped being written in as other, or maybe not being written in at all, um, and and when it when it was an, a specific response to that item, so version control of your um, data collection forms is very important. Version control with and, and knowing the date that that new version went, was created and went into, the, w went into use. And here in AMPATH we have a, we have a problem because um, sometimes we get a new version of the form and it only gets, and it gets distributed to different sites at different times or it gets distributed to sites and they continue to use up the old version of their forms before they start using the new version. So in addition to just when, you know, when the form was finalized, you also need to maintain information about when that form was actually, st st when they actually started to use that form at the sites, okay? At your clinic sites. So w 
with respect to data, um, data entry, I've, as I've already said, you can utilize range restrictions on numeric fields to prevent entry of erroneous data. Um, and you can tag those out of range values. Now there's, I don't know if Ada talked about this when you guys were working on InfoPath, but there's a lot of different ways to manage um, values that are out of range. Um, and I think the way to think about it is an absolute range. Specifically thinking about lab values, this comes up a lot uh, with lab values. So something like CD4 percent, as I said the other day, can only be 0 to 100. There's no reason to allow anybody to enter a value greater than 100. Even if it appears on the form, it's not a valid, it's not a valid value. So if, it, if someone accidentally writes 105 on the form, that form should be tagged and sent back to the clinician who filled out the form for clarification, right? But there are lab values that have normal ranges and, and you know, questionable data outside uh, the normal range. For example, hemoglobin. You don't expect hemoglobin to go up, up above 50. I mean, even, you know, 50 is pretty high. Um, so what you could do in the data entry system is you could, instead of putting uh, absolute restrictions on that, on the range of hemoglobin, because very sick people might have a very high hemoglobin, or very low hemoglobin, or very low hemoglobin, or white blood cell count's another one. I mean, if you're sick, you could have a very high white blood cell count, you know, out of the normal range. So what, what would be ideal is if you could set up in the, sys in the data entry system an alert or that, but that pops up. So if the data entry clerk keys in a number that's outside the normal range for that particular lab value, and, and our normal range may not be what the lab says is normal. I mean, it may be, you may have to extend it a little bit because you do see a lot of values lower. Say, you know, this is really questionable. So that, that forces the data entry clerk to confirm that they've typed in the number right. Okay, so it's just an alert to the data entry clerk, you know, please, this, this number is unexpected, please double check. Mm -hmm. And they can double check and see, yes, that's actually the value that's written here. And then they can go ahead and allow entry of that value, but it's, all, but it's an intermediate check that, that says, um, that gives the data entry clerk a second chance to confirm what they've entered is correct. Um, this, maybe an easier example is to think about weights for children, and then this would be a conditional, this would be a conditional check, you know, that you wouldn't expect any baby under the age of two to, to weigh more than 15 kilos, right? So you could definitely put a check in there that says, you know, that this weight doesn't agree with this, with this calculated age for this particular patient. So that then also forces the data entry clerk to look at the date of birth, did I enter the date of birth right, Have a, so, so that it's calculating the right age, and also re-examine the information they're, they're trying to put in for the, for the way. Values. Um, so if you allow the entry clerk to enter something that's unexpected, you could have another variable in the system that sort of tags that, that value and says, says this is, out of, this is out of range and we know it's out of range and the clerk confirmed that that was what was actually on the form. And then, the, you know, it, even to get more elaborate, you can allow um, a place for the data entry clerk to actually make notes about the unexpected values. You know, I mean, sometimes clinicians will write a note, you know, put the, put the lab value and write a note next to it saying, yes, this is high, but this is the actual value from the lab, you know, or something like uh, lab re-ran the test and came up with the same result, okay? So if you want to get really elaborate, you can just have some of that information entered into the system. Now, I wouldn't advocate doing this for every variable on your form, certainly, but if there are some specific variables that are tr 
problematic or that are very important and you expect there to be um, out of range values and you want to know the details about that, then you can, um, you can have a place to record the details. So, some, so dealing with these out of range values, some of the options are to reject, as I already said, to prevent entry of these out of range values. I mean, this could be problematic um, because you could be rejecting valid data. So, for example, um, this no, labs are notorious for switching assays or switching units of measure. So, if you have a lab that's you know constantly reporting in one unit of measure, and all of a sudden they 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 get a new machine or they get a new assay and they're reporting in another uh, unit of measure that it's 10 times greater you know, than, the, than the previous unit of measure, then all of your values would, would appear to be out of, out of range and none of that data would get entered. So you've got to be careful about you know, total rejection of, of out of range values and just make sure that you're on top of the changes in, in the environment and the way the data is, collect, the way the data is collected. You can accept the out of range values unconditionally and allow entry even though you know the value is wrong. Uh, you know, you can let somebody enter 56 kilos for a, a newborn, you know, and just take it when it maybe should be 5.6 and just accept the 56 and deal with it later uh, with cleanup queries. You can accept the value conditionally, so allow the, the entry to be made, but mark another indicator variable or something that, that says, we know this is out of range, but we're, we're entering it anyway. And then you can also, um, some variables in themselves to, to correcting the out of range value. So converting an out of range value um, either to the, or converting it to the upper or lower limit. And a lot of lab values you have lower limits um, that you, uh, that, that or undetectable below a certain amount. So when you get a note on there that says undetectable or less than 0.1, you can actually enter 0.1. And as long as it's known that, that 0.1 means, really means less than 0.1, um, or that the undetectable, for un something undetectable, you enter the lowest value, then that's an option as well. Although, um, I recommend if, if lab values are going to come back with a greater than or less than sign, that, that you should have a, a second qualitative variable for that lab value that holds the, um, the greater than or less than sign. So in addition to the, to the numeric value of that lab result, you have a separate field that would hold a less than or greater than sign if it appeared on the, on the on the summary page, on the results page from the lab. So this really, so this upper and lower bound value is when you see something like undetectable. So a viral load, load is undetectable, a lot of people enter the lower limit of the assay, which is either 50 or 400, depending on which assay you're using, typically. Okay, so that's all that I have on um, out of range values. Any questions or comments?